Hey, all right. Wanted to do a short training with you guys today because somebody was talking to me earlier and I was telling them like, you just need to focus on your strengths. Don't worry about your weaknesses. Leave your weaknesses to somebody who can actually do what you do, but do your weaknesses better than you trying to learn them. The problem with a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs who want to get into real estate and invest, rather than just see themselves as investors, hey man, I got money, I'm going to dump it over to you and I'm going to let you do what you're good at. They want to own it. They want to be like, nah, I got to control it. I got to hold it myself. Like, look, that's the dumbest shit ever. You are going to get yourself into a situation where you can't get out of it. Real estate, like businesses, you can't just get rid of them. You can't just shut your doors, um, bang down a lease and move on. And with a real estate multifamily deal, if you're going to get into multifamily, like the ways that we're looking at multifamily, we're talking about 80, 100, 200 tenants. You can't just get rid of this thing. You have to be focused on what you're doing. So that said, I wanted to kind of go over a couple of things. I'll just share with you what my strengths are, right? And, and, and I, it takes a lot of transparency because I don't feel like I'm good at everything. When I've been doing something for 20 years, I still feel like there's there's probably about 10% of things that I don't know, but I know what I know and I know what I'm good at. So one of those things, I'm great at the deal. I'm great at locating deals. I know how to talk to brokers. So, you know, and I'll, I'll go through all that stuff, but that's a part of the deal. So when you know locations, that's a strength of mine. I get it. I can evaluate a deal. I can evaluate deals very quickly. So when I'm looking at a deal, I don't need a lot of information to know whether I think that's a great deal or not. Number one, location. Number two, I can run the numbers very fast. I can quickly evaluate a deal before going down the trenches. I can get the debt, Right? Debt is very important. I know a lot of people say stay out of debt, but we're talking about asset-based debt. We're talking about good debt, debt that actually makes you money, not takes money away from you. I understand debt. I know what the lenders for a multifamily real estate deal are looking like. I know what they want. I know the rates. I know the terms. They're going to say, hey, we're looking at the uh, 10-year treasury. This is the spread over that. This we're, this the life codes used. Um the uh, sofa and the sofa is at five point this, this time. And you know, like you need to know what all that stuff means as you're having a conversation with these guys. I'm great at that. I'm great at financing. I understand it. All right. So I'm great at underwriting. I know how to underwrite a deal. Underwriting a deal is different from evaluating a deal. When I'm underwriting a deal, I, I was just talking to someone about this. So you need to know um, what your expenses are. You need to know which ones are out of line. You need to know, hey, if there's a five to there's a five percent increase in our operational expenses or something like that, and that goes up or down. You need to be able to look at it. There's rules of thumb that are industry specific. They're changing all the time. You got to know what that is, and you also got to know when to not use them when they're out of line. The age of the property. You have to be able to walk these properties. You have to have walked so many properties of the same age, same location. Um, same standard that you can walk on a site and go, oh, you know what? This, this place is trash. I've seen it before. I don't like it. Or, hey, this place is a killer screamer deal. I love it based on because I've already done some level of underwriting. And that's not just the property. That may be the market also, right? Super important. I'm great at that I, because I spend so much time in, this, in the trenches doing it, right? I understand the managers. I understand property management. Because I've had to property manage so many of my own multifamily deals, my own residential deals, I've had to oversee and manage people. I've had, I've had to deal with my project managers. I've had to deal with my property managers. I've had to deal with the residential leasing person. I've had to deal with just my on-site uh, managers that we've had in our smaller deals. Um, let's see, what else? Like, I've had to deal with maintenance people, contract services, landscapers, um, the city, Dealing with uh, like like the um, was that the trash roll offs and stuff because we've had our own roll offs at our properties. Like we have to deal with all that stuff. This is important to know. Like painting contractors, everything. Yeah, it isn't just manage the management company. There are so many other things. And even if you have a management company, you have to understand how they manage. They may have their own leasing. They may have their own leasing team. They may have their own um, maintenance people. And they may have their own contractors services that they actually have. So all of these things matter. You may get a bill for management because yes, they took their gross rental income off. They took their, their gross off the top of collections, but they may have charged you more line item stuff because, oh, you used our people for this and we get a fee for that. We use, you used our people for this. So you get a fee for that. Oh, by the way, if you sell, and these are on smaller deals, right? You negotiate this. If you sell, 
your management company may have in a contract that says they get first right or first right of refusal, or they will be the listing agent. And you may not want to do that. You may have somebody else on your team, maybe the broker that brought the deal to you. You, you know, I mean, that's how it works, right? If a broker brings you a deal to buy, you're probably going to use them to exit your deals as well, right? If you're going to sell. So that may be in conflict. You need to know this. I know this. I've already had these experiences, right? I also know how to exit a deal, right? Exit a deal how? I may sell it or I may do a cash out. Cash out. I may sell and I may cash it out. I don't know. But I know how to exit a deal. I know the same way that you prepare a deal to um, refinance and sell, or the same way you prepare a deal to sell, you prepare a deal to buy, right? As an owner, I know how to prepare a deal when I'm getting ready to buy the deal. I know how to position the deal for my lenders. I know how to underwrite the deal correctly, overall market and asset. I know how to deal with the management companies, bringing them in, getting them ready to do a takeover of management. And I also know how to position all of these things to bundle this up and package it up and go back to a, another lender and say, hey guys, here's the underwriting as it relates to what we've been able to do. Here's the managers and here's what we've been able to achieve as it relates to exiting a plan. Here's what we're looking to do. We're doing a cash out refi. And here's what we're going to do with that capital. Like, I'm great at these things. This is really communication. Like, this is all communication, right? What else am I good at? I'm good at with my investors. I know how to keep it very simple for my investors. I understand the, I understand the um, SEC 506C because we have a C as it relates to our fund. So I understand all this stuff. This is this right here from an equity. This is about funds. This is about syndication. Syndication. Like I'm great at this. So I understand what needs to be done. I understand all these things. So these are things that I'm in the trenches doing all day. I look at thousands of units all the time. Like I'm always out at properties. We looked at a 189 unit the other day. We sent over an offer for a 224 unit the other day. Um, I'm out walking properties on boots on the ground. I'm looking at stuff. I'm going to other markets. I'm talking to brokers all the time. I'm great at talking to brokers. Brokers, uh, brokers like me. I'm great at talking to the apartment groups. The owners of the actual apartment building. So other, other institutions and, and apartment group owners that are partners with institutions like BlackRock, Blackstone, um, insurance, life insurance companies, Guardian Life, all these different big institutions partner with other apartment group owners, guys like myself or other bigger institutions and they have vertical, they have all their stuff in house. Like I know how to have this conversation with these guys. I know what to say when I'm talking to these people. These are my strengths, right? And bigger than not, I'm just a regular guy. I know how to communicate. I know how to communicate and we'll put from investors, I know how to raise money. I do know how to raise money. Like these are the things that you have to know how to do. So look, if you have a business and you're like, oh, big, I want to do what you do. I want to jump straight in and I want to buy a multifamily deal. What are your strengths right now, right? Looking at all this stuff, this is all marketing and sales, just like a business, but you got to understand multifamily apartment buildings. You got to understand whether you're going after a five unit all the way up to a 20 unit, a 32 unit, all the way up to a 60 unit. Very specific groups of people own those properties. It's a mom and a pop, or it's like a partnership. You have like two or three people that's pulled their LLCs together, or it's a tick, or whatever it is that they did to collaborate in that size of a unit, and those size of units, 65, somewhere in there. Once you break 65, 70 units, and you start pumping out 70 all the way up to about 120 units, that's a very different owner in a very different market. You in, in, in tier one markets like I'm in San Diego and, Cal, you know, and uh, in California and I'm looking in, or in um, Orange County, Laguna Niguel, like, like that, those areas, San Clemente stuff like that's a bit those those markets, those price points of those specific properties push into a different group of owner. And that means you got to know what to say to them. You got to know exactly what to say to the broker, because these people are not going to take your call two times if you screw up. Right. You've got to have great communication skills. But if you're a business owner and that's your thing, that's how you've made your money this whole time. You'd be like, Vic, I got 200, 300. I got a million dollars. I got five million dollars. And I'm thinking about getting into multifamily. First things first, if you aren't great at the majority, like 90 percent of these things, no lender and the debt side is going to give you a loan. 
you're going to have to bring somebody else in that has the experience, has the balance sheet, has the, has the schedule of real estate. That that's what they're looking for. They, Hey, do you know, have you ever managed the property like this? That's first. So if you're thinking about that, that these are my strengths and you're like, Hey Vic, I have a business. Your best bet at some point is to one, invest with someone like me or me, right? You go to Bell Capital, you can register. Uh, we can schedule a call with myself, somebody on my team. And we'll ask you what your needs are as it relates to, are you looking for passive income? You look for tax write-offs. What are you looking to do? You're looking to move your IRA money out of there and self-directed and invest in some real estate. So you get those benefits. So you can kind of control your future. Great. But if you have a business and you're thinking about like, I just want to dabble. There's no dabbling in this. You're going to all in or all out. These are my strengths. I'm strong in these things. Realistically, if I can pick what I really like to do, I'm a deal guy. I love going to deals. I love walking properties. I love talking to the people there. I love talking to managers and I love talking to the debt people on the financing side because I understand it. I get it. I'm like, hey, this is a great asset. How can we partner on this? Because your debt people are going to be your partners. But if you're a business owner, you don't know that. You're in the trenches all day. You're making a bunch of money, but you can't look up and you shouldn't. If your business is your strength, let your business be your strength. Let real estate, real estate investing, and all that other stuff be the strength of another real estate investor. And you just partner and invest money with them. It's just easier, right? One, you have more, you have less risk of losing money if you invest with someone who knows what they're doing and they're strong at it, right? I have a fund. I've already syndicated deals. I've already put deals together with partners, JV stuff. I've always been the guy that found the deal, evaluated the deal, found the debt, underwrited the deal, managed the managers or I managed the properties themselves. And I've went to the lenders and we've refinanced, we've exited the properties, we've either sold them or we've refinanced our money out. I've kept my investors in the deal, gave them their money back. And we turned around and then I resold the property for two to three times and one time, four times what we had in the deal already. I'm already good at that. I'm good at connecting with my investors. Oh, by the way, you have to connect with your investors. And oh, by the way, you got to connect with your partners, which are your debt guys. They want to report every quarter. Most people don't know that. Ah, I'm going to do this deal. Hey, you're still going to be in constant communication with what's going on. Your property is on their asset slash liability column. <laughs> so they want to talk to you all the time. They're your partners. You got to know what to say to your SEC attorney as you're structuring your deal. How do you want to do it? Do you want a 506C or do you want a 506B? 506B is that non-accredited investors can be in that one, but you can't general solicit. You can't go to market and talk about a lot of stuff that I go to market and talk about. Or you can do a 506C, but they got to be all accredited, meaning that they got to make 200000 a year, they got to have, or they have to have a household income, a combined spouse to 300,000 a year, or they got to have a million dollar net worth, not including your primary residence. That's why I tell you guys, your primary residence is not an asset. It's a liability if you live in it. All right. So, and you got to know the difference. You got to be like, Hey, we're doing an equity raise, or we're going to do a fund, or we're going to do a fund of funds, or we're going to do a debt fund. Like you got to know all these things, man. You can't just braze over them. Super important. But when this becomes your when this becomes your superpower, <laughs> and again, I don't do it all. I have a team. I have people on my team that help me. There's brokers, there's appraisers, there's a title company, um, there's there's my acquisition person, Corian. There's Rashana. She makes those phone calls. She's also involved in our investor relations. Like we have a group of people, and I have Jamie to oversee anything, any questions that we have, whatever it is that we're working on, keeps us all in line, as well as my SEC attorneys, my real estate attorney and all the other people I have ready to go, not including any brokers that bring me deals that we're going to be working together on. So this is all important, guys. And I wanted to share this with you and it actually went long, but you need to focus on your strengths. Leave your weaknesses alone. If any of the, if you're just, if you're, your business is your strength, business is your superpower, you're out there, you're crushing it, you're dominating, you're pushing it, you're making money and you're pushing that money off to the side and sitting in savings, not making you any more money, then push it over and invest in real estate with guys like myself, someone who knows what they're doing, fund manager, syndicator. They're out finding great deals that cash flow in great locations, and they can give you a return on that money. While you focus on your strengths, they're focusing on theirs, like me, all right? So if you want to have that uh, conversation with me, love to have, love to have you, love to have you. Um, I'll just leave this right here. But I want you to guys to get that, right? You can go to bell-capital.com. And you can schedule a call with myself or someone on my team is going to talk to you. We'll go over the phone calls are five minutes. Shouldn't take more than that. 
just going to find out what your needs are and explain to you how the returns potentially work. You got to be accredited to invest with us and see if it's going to be a fit and get you started with your investment. That's really what I want to do for you. But man, let me go to work for you. Let me go to work for you. Invest in one of my deals. Be a partner with us over here. Um, I'm looking for deals. We're turning in offers all the time. I'm going to buy these deals, period. And I want you to be an investor in our deals so we can have that long-term relationship so I can continue to do what I'm strong at, what my superpowers are, and you can focus on that for yourself so you can build the business that you want to take care of your family and boost your investments and create generational wealth through multifamily investing in some of the deals that I'm buying. I want to, I want you to be a part of that. So I hope this thing helps you. This was about focusing on your strengths. I know I went through minds, but if you take a look at what you really do in your business as an entrepreneur or in your career, your job, whatever it is that you have going on, is that your strength? Is that your superpower? Just focus there. Focus on making more money and then taking that money, pushing it into an asset that continues to pay you over time, right? But Focus, focus, focus. Do not focus on your weaknesses. Focus on your strengths and build your strengths to where they constantly pay you and you use that money that came from those things and you push that into where somebody else is strong and let them help you. That's what I've done. That's what I continue to do. And I want to be able to help you do that. So bell-capital.com and hit us up. You can schedule a call or you can reach out to me. Like this video, share this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you hate it. Don't be a hater and a hider at the same time. I'm here for you. Oh, and subscribe to my channel. I really want to help you guys. If you have comments or anything like that, you want me to go over something, I'll be happy to do that. This is important. I'm. We are eventually going to get to a billion dollars worth of real estate in the future. Very few times do you have somebody that is on that path, take the time to make some videos and share with you why he's doing what he's doing, what he's looking at, why he's doing it. Man, there's people out there now that I still wonder what they do and they say, they say it, but they don't show it. They don't share all of it because they still try to keep stuff for themselves. Yes, you're going to have to do that in your business. But at this moment, I want to share with you what I'm doing so you can either invest with me or you can go off and do this yourself. But this is what it takes. All right. Have a great day today. Let's go.